Hey everyone, my name is Drew, and we're here, and this is going to be week number five, I believe, of season six of the UBL, we're up against Johnny GB and his Oregon Douglets, and I'll, I'll be honest, I mean, this kind of feels like must-win territory. I have been kind of clawing my way back, but these next few matches are going to feel like I have to win every week, and to be completely honest, I do think this is going to probably be the best matchup I have all season long, so I'm going to try to do what I can with that, but with that, I just want to get right into team preview. So... Let's see here. He does bring the Lele, Galvantula, Armaldo, Charizard, Crocodile, and Alakazam. Okay, so right off the bat, no Ferrothorn. No Ferrothorn is very interesting to me. No Ferrothorn is incredibly interesting because no Ferrothorn makes it so that Zarud doesn't really have to guess. It doesn't have to kind of make any kind of assumptions here. No, Gyarados is very, very interesting. I really did expect the Gyarados, but... I did tell myself that if I Z the Galvantula, the, my go-to lead has to be the the Victini here. And I think I'm going to do that. But yeah, so far, just looking at this, the biggest thing... Oh, no Hit only. That is nuts, man. No Hit No Hit only. Hit only destroyed my team. Hit only went absolutely in and demolished my team. But yeah, Zuri doesn't really have to guess with the Ferrothorn, which is very interesting. And I'm going to take a screenshot before time runs out. But... Giving Zarude of that much more freedom makes my job a whole lot easier. Makes my job a whole lot easier. I can U-turn in and out pretty darn freely. And I can start to make things happen. But overall, I mean, it's still going to be tough. The Armaldo does kind of throw a wrench into things because Armaldo is just makes some matchups awkward in ways that I don't like. But I do think I'm going to have opportunities against this team. Now, uh, if the Galvantula comes out, then I, I'm fine to reveal Scarf on turn one. Yeah, Galvantula does come out. So, I, I did some pregame calc, right? And and I and this is going to be an Adamant Victini. Or no, sorry, a, a Jolly Victini with Blue Flare. And I calc it out knowing that Blue Flare should KO. Yeah, so I'm going to reveal Scarf turn one. But uh, Jolly Blue Flare picks up a KO regardless. But in, unless this thing sashed, obviously. So we'll be sashed. We'll get up sticky webs, which is not ideal, but I think we managed that decently fine. Uh, I don't think anything super duper threatens. I don't think anything super duper threatens my, my sand slash's ability to spin if I get it in freely and I can kind of manage some things happening. Does switch out, which is interesting to me. Nothing really wants to take this. Goes into the Armaldo. Now, again, this is jolly blue flare so it's not gonna do the most damage in the world but very solid amount of chip damage here i kind of want to go directly into this oh i have double removal this week between defog and between defog and D defog rotom and rapid spin sand slash so that was another kind of um tech that i tried because he does have a lot of really good options for removal this week We'll knock off the leftovers, but honestly, I don't mind that nearly as much because it's simply because the the uh, the thing isn't here. How uh, the hit only. Although the crocodile can become an issue pretty quickly. Uh, I really want to. You know what? I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna see how much damage we can pull off with the hydro pump. We do land it, and oh no, we don't. Never mind. We don't land it. Okay, so this honestly does make me quite soft to the crocodile, but I think ultimately we can out damage the crocodile in the end. But who knows? Those are famous last words. It doesn't really have great switches in, but man, missing that hydro pump really is not ideal. Yeah, hydro pump should have KO'd by every indication. I do want a Volt Switch because I do think you would want to keep this thing, especially because it hasn't rapid spun and it hasn't gotten up rocks yet. When I, when I can very clearly threaten a KO here. So I think... I think he would want to preserve this thing. And not just let it go down to a Hydro Pump when it clearly could. And if I'm wrong about that, then I'm wrong about that. But I think his team does have a lot of options. And I think um, overall I can kind of play off of that. No, just lets me get, get off the Volt Switch. It's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. But, but, no, I don't think it's time for that yet. Um, I think I just make this play here now. Yeah, I think this is fine. I, 
I would ideally like the Sand Slash to kind of deal with the... To at least switch into the... The... Cook it out decently well, but... You know, if, if that's difficult to pull off, then it's just difficult to pull off. What can I say, right? I'm going to... I could attempt to get Spikes up. I could attempt to get Spikes up. He could Rapid Spin, but we could exchange Rapid Spins, and I'm always get and I'm always on the upper end of that exchange because I'm also spinning away webs in the, in the process. But does withdraw right away. Goes into the Lele. This thing could very obviously have Energy Ball, but um, my always switch into this thing is always going to be the the Celestia. Well, for now, right? I still think I have the Porygon av available to me for these types of situations as well. And I think well, Porygon gives me a little bit of momentum gathering here, but Cell Steel just gives me a lot of damage. Cell Steel just gives me a lot of damage. Potentially. I think I make the Cell Steel play f the, this first time. I, I, I'd i be surprised about anything other than Energy Ball. But we can certainly see. I would I would definitely not be surprised to see this thing be, be Scarfed. This thing could be Specs. Goes for the Psy Shock, which is totally fair. Uh, we take that decently okay. Uh, but not the best. Um, now, it looks like... Well, no. The, the, the obvious play would be to go into the Charizard. Do I have counterplay to the Charizard, really? I think... I think I make this play. I think, yeah, I think I make this play. And this will give me a turn to defog. Goes in the crocodile instead. That's very that's very interesting. But he does have to think about. He does have to at least think about. And this is the exact reason why I brought rocks this week instead of spikes. I, I couldn't fit both on, on this team, unfortunately. But the fact that it that it it won't be resisted by the crocodile and the ferrothorn, which obviously didn't come, but. Uh, that was a huge consideration for me. Charizard's probably going to be booed, so that probably doesn't end up mattering too, too much. Uh, I still think I can find a turn to... Oh, this thing is leftovers, correct? I still think I find a turn to Willow here. I don't know. That feels risky in a way that I don't like. Uh, I think he plays off of, off of potential default. I don't know. Maybe he doesn't. He goes for rocks, which is very interesting. Uh, but yeah, I can I can pretty freely defog now after getting this Willow Wisp off. And now that the Crocodile is less of an issue, I feel a lot better about the match. I feel a lot better about a lot of things. Regardless, I think I defog as soon as I can. Actually, do I? Because Sand Slash is still really, really solid here. Sand Slash is still a really solid option. And... Even so is so is Hydro Pump increasingly. Hydro Pump threatens a KO. Not the it's not the strongest threat, but it does threaten a KO. But what I want to defog first, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. I think giving up the Sand Slash to deal with this specifically is okay. Because I think from here on out, as long as I don't have webs on my side, and... Uh, I don't know, I don't know. It's tough, because if this thing goes... The other consideration is if this thing goes down, then that makes my my Sand Slash a lot more expendable. And if my Sand Slash is more expendable, then, then I can more easily find a turn to defog in the later game. Or sorry, to, 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 to Rapid Spin. But also, knowing that this thing has has rocks instead makes me a lot more willing to kind of... Wait, did I outspeed as well? No, I, no, I, I almost certainly didn't. I, I, think I'm, I think I'm going crazy here. Uh, let's see. It does feel really strong to just go out into this thing. It leaves the Rotom for Death Fodder, which I'm probably going to need against the Charizard, maybe. Or just against a Lele, for... potentially. 
Yeah, I think I'm in a position to make this play. Um, I might have... It, it, it might have been better for me to just let the, the thing go down, but it's difficult to say at this point, right? And the bigger point is that, um, is that I will have Spike still up, so the Galvantula goes down to re-entry. And... And... I should be able to just get... Get, uh... The hazards off the field. Rapid Spin should actually pick, pick up a KO too. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Is this a play? I think it has to be. I think it has to be. It goes for Toxic, but again, this Sand Slash is now very, very expendable. It can just kind of sit in front of the Armaldo if the Armaldo wants to do anything. But realistically, in front of the Armaldo, I just set up spikes. I, you know, chip it down and. I feel like I deal with the Armaldo fine. It's really, it's really the Crocodile that this Sand Slash, it, it, it's really Crocodile and Hazards that this Sand Slash is meant to kind of do in this matchup. So I feel okay about this. Galvantula is, is an on option. So I'm safe from webs as long as I keep pressure on. Um, everything else. The Charge Art is going to be a, tr a tricky one. The Charge Art is definitely going to be a tricky one. But honestly, I don't think he has really solid options against against Zerud's, uh, Zerud spamming, Zerud spamming Darkest Lair anymore. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I should be able, I mean, I can just knock off to see an item, but at the same time, if th there's no real downside at all to going out into, into even the duck here. Well, no, the duck, I think, I, I think I should save the duck for the Charizard. I think that's a for sure, for sure. But I think now he expects a Celsius to come in, and he might honestly just go for a an an electric move. I think I knock off here because that that gets me value, but maybe not because maybe it's it's better for me to have the Lele force itself to lock into a move. I don't know. Is that a crit? That's that's got to be a crit. That's not a crit. That has to be specs. Yeah, that was for sure, for sure specs, which should be. Fine. It really makes me want to go out into Zerud. Uh, Zerud gets a free U-turn here, even if the Charizard wants to come in. But he, but he doesn't have to lock himself into a move anymore, so he could just go for the Moon Blast. And if he goes for the Moon Blast, then I go into Cell Steel, right? Or just let this thing go down. Um, I already have the spikes up, so the Gavantula can't come in. Everything else is pressured. So letting this thing go down is probably for the best. Yeah, I think everything else just puts a lot of pressure on the team. I can try to get some more spikes up if that helps, but uh, but I think there's really no reason to kind of do anything else. Oh, well, yeah, so him going for the Shadow Ball really did give me freeze, freeze a Rude, which, does kind, which is kind of unfortunate, but at the end of the day, you know, we just kind of deal what we have to deal with. I think I can just go into Zerude, click U-turn, and then, and then even if he goes into the Charge Art, that allows me to go into... It allows me to go into the Victini and then Bolt Strike is increasingly free. Yeah, I think that is going to be how I play this. I think that has to be how I play this. Oh, this thing is not as low as I originally thought. Honest to God, I thought this thing was lower. That's not even a meme. I thought this thing was a lot lower. Against Zerud, yeah, I have to I have to either power up or Darkest Larry to KO. But I think Darkest Larry is fine, right? Darkest Larry should be fine. If this thing is max HP well no, this thing has no reason to be max HP. Uh, if this thing is max HP, then it's a roll, but I mean at this point at, at this point I would just have to admit that I've messed up here. I completely mis misremembered how much HP this thing had, but it's okay, we're here now. It's okay. He doesn't know that I'm scarfed yet. He doesn't know that I'm scarfed yet, but Charizard very clearly comes in. Charizard means that I go out into the duck. Duck means that I teleport, and then we start to make some things happen from there. Uh, I don't think... I think as long as I don't give him free turns to to remove or do anything like that, then I think... As, uh, like I said, like I just said before, I think as long as I keep pressure, um, his counterplay is not the best right now. Without the, without again the, the fair thorn, and now without the crocodile, uh, bolt strikes are remarkably free, especially with how weak the Armaldo's gotten. Goes for a dragon dance. Okay, that's remarkably scary. That's remarkably scary. 
Uh, so let's see. Now I have to hit this thing. Charizard. Charizard, Charizard, Charizard. Against Porygon. Psyshock does more. And that's only because, uh... That's only because of terrain. I'm gonna see Charizard Mega. And just... Make it a regular Charizard. At plus one, Flare Blitz does so much damage. But, I think... I think because... Oh my god, that's right. I, I, I didn't even... I didn't even speed creep for... For... For max speed Charizard. I only sped crept for Lele, so I so this outspeeds both my both my Victini and my Zarude. But okay, thankfully it's not a whole lot of damage. This thing could, could actually be yeah I, yeah I don't know what this thing is, but yeah I mean it's close enough to a two KO. It's close enough to a two KO, but I don't really have any counterplay right. Yeah, once the Sand Slash goes down, I really don't have much against this. I kind of have to just stay in and hope the Ice Beam is a 2 KO and hope that this thing doesn't, you know, roost up and Dragon Dance up to a million, right? Because Charizard legitimately beats me if it, if it Dragon Dance is up to a million. Like, that's a genuine concern right now. Uh, it does withdraw. Okay, okay. So, again, the same thing as always. Just keep up the pressure and I'm, and I'm in a really solid position. I would have to assume that the Armaldo wants to come in here. I would have to assume that the Armaldo wants to come in here. And if the Armaldo does come in here to get up, I'm gonna. Yeah, Armaldo wants to remove. But why? This thing is boots. Charizard's unaffected, and Alakazam is Magic Arts. I don't know why. What this really accomplishes, other than uh, gets him a knockoff here. So I go into this. I go into this just so I can Volt Switch. And then... And then from the Volt Switch... Uh, well, no. This thing is just... I Do I really risk the Hydro Pump? Do I really risk the Hydro Pump here? This is so scary with that Charizard running around. Uh, yeah, yeah, Volt Switch doesn't quite do it. And there's nothing that I would want to come in after the Volt Switch. So I think I just go for the Hydro Pump? I think I just have to at this point. We missed another one. And as he goes for the rapid spin. Yeah, of course. Okay. That's worst case scenario, obviously. But again, the the spikes don't really matter that much. The spikes don't really matter that much. Uh, I can... Um, let's assume a max HP Armaldo. Does Zarude pick this up? Zarude has to power whip, which is scary. Zarude has to power whip. Celsius can heavy slam, but then it just invites in the Charizard. It just invites in the Charizard. Let me see something. Um. Do I have to do this? I, mm, this Armaldo puts me in such a bad position. I think I have to do this because this is going to put Celesteel in a position. Well, let me think. If the Charizard is Dragon Dance Roost, okay, okay, yeah, I actually just worked it out. So, so the so the Charizard would have to be Dragon Dance Roost, um, Earthquake, Fla Flare Blitz, and if the Charizard comes into to take me out and it goes for the flare blitz then then uh it's gonna burn itself out to its own recoil 
But again, it could just drag it up to a million. That's the scariest part about the, about this entire thing. Man, Charizard really just tears through my team, doesn't it? Charizard really does just tear through my team. And I don't even know what's better here. Well, I guess I guess I would have the Porygon in the back as insurance, but it's really tough. It's really, really tough. I think... I think the main takeaway here is... If this thing's Roost... Then this is bad. If this thing is Dragon Dance 3 attacks... Then I'll always be fine. Thunder Punch. Okay. That's huge. That's huge. Okay. That's huge. Because now I know that... Yeah, yeah so Flare Blitz, Thunder Punch, and Earthquake. Which means that Porygon bails me out. Porygon hard bails me out. Yeah, that Charizard set was nothing that I was that I was prepared for. That Charizard set was nothing that I was prepared for. But Dragon Dance 3 attacks is kind of the one set that I can handle. Just for the Flare Bullet, so it might burn itself out. Oh man, that is, that's kind of scary. Okay. Uh, so what's left? What's left here? Just the Alakazam, correct? Just the Alakazam. Um, but yeah, I, I'm very, very speechless. I'm very, very speechless. Um, but could he have won with just Flare Bullets and Earthquake? I think he could have against a team that I brought. Maybe, maybe he was scared of the Rotom, so he thought Thunder Punch was necessary. Maybe he was scared of the of the Rotom, so Thunder Punch could have done it if, as long as it gets chipped down, obviously. But yeah, very 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 well played game. Very very well played game. Uh, and unless this thing is scarfed or this thing goes for. Agility, if, if it even can. Um, I think my my dual scarfers in the back should be able to to manage it. Uh, and I can't, and I couldn't imagine him going for a Shadow Ball in this situation. Look for the Charge Beam, but again, it should always be fine. Uh, and yeah, just to be extra safe, I'll click U-turn. Um. But yeah, that, I, there's no way around that. That was incredibly scary. That was so frightening. I was just thinking, Scar Scarf Charge Beam wouldn't even be, like, that bad of a bring here. Um, but again, nothing that he would uh, hit the... Hit the... Hit the Victini with would be great against the Zarude here. Side Shock, yeah, 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 for sure. And that was just the safest way to go about the end game, I think. And that's going to be a win, but not a very strong one, right? Uh, I, again, I, I definitely get the reasoning for 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 Dragon Dance three attacks, but man, Dragon Dance Roost two attacks just tears through my team in a way that I do not feel comfortable with. Um, especially the team that I brought. I don't even know if my like roster has a better kind of counterplay to it it's really really tough to say but i do think that being able to roost and set up in front of something on my team just kind of goes in but uh yeah i suppose that's gonna be it for for this week thank you guys so so much for watching we'll be back really really soon with more weeks at the ubl and other things that are coming up really really soon once again with that thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you again Ouch.